Hi guys, Pete here, N6QW, and we're filming a little uh, video here today about what I call the um, ZL2 BMI Challenge. And what this is about is Eric Sears, ZL2 MBI, in the uh, issue, uh, the fall issue of uh, the 2019 GRQ, GQRP Sprat had a wonderful transceiver in there that he uses for what he calls tramping. He goes out in the outback and he uh, has built a lot of DSB rigs, but this one in particular was a sideband rig and it was incredibly small. And the idea was that it'd be small so it could fit in his backpack. And uh, I contacted him and congratulated him on the uh, very fine piece of work uh, because I thought it was really uh, an outstanding transceiver and then I shared with him that I had written an article for QRP quarterly about seven years ago uh, called the shirt pocket transceiver and I uh, proudly shared that it was 16 uh, cubic inches and uh, <clears throat> uh, Eric wrote back to me and said mine is smaller than that so that started the challenge of how I could build something that was uh, comparable to his rig but a lot smaller and so essentially we're going to have a transceiver that's about 2.75 uh, inches uh, wide about one and a quarter inches high and four inches deep and so this presents a real challenge because um, the difficulty with building something like that is you you have to have I.O. You have to have space for input and output and how, how in the world do you create enough space to do that and yet build everything in there um, Eric's rig operates on three bands uh, 160 80 and 40 and uh, I uh, I'm going to uh, just make this for a 40 meter rig now one of the things that's interesting is um, he used an OLED display and uh, mine will have an OLED, but mine is a half inch high OLED, where his is the uh, one inch OLED. And um, uh, his is, uses two NE602s, much like my sudden transceiver. And it does have uh, a, a very interesting uh, uh, device for producing the LO and BFO. And like I did in the sudden, he switches the LO and BFO. Uh, to the NE602s dependent upon whether it's transmitted or received. But one of the problems is this is the OLED half inch OLED display and there's no mounting holes or anything of that sort so how in the world do you mount this thing on um, the panel? And I came up with an idea and of course having a, a CNC mill um, and an NC mill uh, there's some th there's some tools available to you, and essentially, what I did is I took a piece of plastic here, and actually this is the cutout. Uh, I have there's a uh, YouTube video uh, of uh, what I did with a, uh, a Tentec uh, uh, Triton for the the analog version, the Model 540, and I cut a slot out of the uh, uh, out of a piece of plastic so I could mount an LCD display, and essentially. This is part of the plastic that I cut out, so I recycled some things here. Essentially what I did is I cut out the inside of this so that this uh, OLED would fit in there. And then I had to elevate it, and I had some pieces of uh, stock, aluminum stock that I'd cut off of something. So I just super glued those to the back side of the board and super glued the plastic. And there's a there's a end stop here, so essentially you can just put this into here and you have the display like that and then I'll put a uh, a keeper and and I had used some plastic uh, some uh, gorilla tape just to tape this down so that essentially it uh, it wouldn't move once you once you got it installed so this uh, piece of plastic here serves as a a means for uh, holding the device there's an end stop here so it can only go so far and then it lines up perfectly with the hole which I cut out with the manual mill and so uh, this will be um, this will be the audio gain control uh, this 
these two are switches one is for upper and lower sideband and this VFO has two ranges on it so it's an A and B VFO uh, this is the mic input that's the audio output and that's where the um, essentially where the uh, encoder goes so that you can tune this thing and uh, it's a it's quite small so I just wanted to cover uh, this piece of the video was how I made this catch device back here and this offers a convenient way so it just slips in there and it and when I, once I tape it down or put something on the other end stop here it won't move so essentially you have a very nice display and uh, you want to see what this kind of looks like uh, here's what happens yeah I am a ham genius and uh, so the information on there is um, when you switch VFOs A and B uh, you just get a different range and uh, you, you also displays that it's got upper sideband lower sideband and it also displays the step tuning rate and uh, when you hit the tune button and I'm gonna have to put the tune button on the back panel or perhaps up here in this corner here when you hit the tune button part of the display goes away and says tune and it always tunes on the uh, primary VFO the A VFO so anyway this is Pete N6QW I wanted to share some of the details on the ZL2 BMI challenge rig uh, if you do the calculation on the dimensions this comes in at 13.75 cubic inches so uh, essentially 2 cubic inches plus uh, 2.25 cubic inches smaller than my shirt pocket transceiver. N6QW out.